Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, this is Kashif Kamran and I welcome you all to the day four of the advanced audit and assurance practice to pass webinar for exams in June 2021 being organized by ACCA Pakistan. Uh, I hope all of you can hear me. Can you kindly confirm that before I start my proceeding of the day four? Okay, thank you very much for confirming that and i hope my sound is loud and clear to all of you okay that's great so so let's start on with the proceeding for the day four of the webinar now on the fourth day today the focus of the webinar is on audit evidence and audit procedures now this is a very very important topic audit evidence and audit procedure and over the next three hours i will be guiding you about the examiner expectations from the topic audit evidence and procedures and how they come in the AAA paper. So just before starting on with audit evidence and procedures on day four, just a quick recap that on the first day of the webinar, we focused on the computer based exams and the new article published by the examiner. On the day two, we focused on the business risk primarily and on the day three, we focused on the ethical and professional issues. So I hope you have all watched the previous three days. Either you have attended the live webinar or you have taken on the recordings. Now let's start with the fourth day of the webinar today. And the focus of the fourth day is audit procedures and evidence. Just give me one minute before I start discussing with you audit procedures and uh, evidence now you all know that this topic is uh, very very important from the examination point of view and is a regular feature of exam paper when you look at the AAA past papers and again it's very difficult that you find an exam setting uh, without the topic procedures now in my previous many webinars uh, I have informed or educated students about what they should do uh, in terms of writing a procedure or an evidence in the exam paper. And many students have benefited from that and have passed their AAA paper. Uh, I, I want to reaffirm that same guidance today to all of you that how you go about writing a procedure and audit evidence in the AAA paper and how you can be excellent on this topic. So, so let's start with the journey and let's see what I have in store for you today. Now, in terms of my previous webinars, uh, many times I have covered this topic and I would like to suggest three webinars to all of you. My March 20 webinar, you can see the hyperlink. My December 19 webinar, you can see the hyperlink. December 18 webinar, sorry, and my September 19 webinar. So these are three good webinars where this topic has been drilled and the topic has been explored in a greater depth. And, and I would recommend all of you that beside the June 21 webinar today, you should watch the three webinars recommended by the tutor, which is very, very important. Right? So I hope you got that message. So three previous webinars, that's like 15 hours and sorry, that's like three previous webinars that's like nine hours and three hours today that's like 12 hours so if you spend 12 hours on this topic procedures and evidence you will be in an excellent position to take on this topic in your actual exams in june 21. i hope that's clear to all of you right let's start on with the agenda the agenda today uh two articles uh recommendable articles and you will be finding them in the handout section shortly uh, one article is exam technique article uh, which is a part four and the part four deals with audit procedure and then there is an article known as examining evidence which gives you a clear idea or a differentiation between what is an audit procedure and what is an audit evidence if any student is still confused between what is a procedure and what is an evidence this article examining evidence will really will really be a mind opener for all of you that how and what is the difference between a procedure and an evidence so you will get these two articles in the handout section shortly so please download them 
and start reading them over the next 24 hours i be i will be looking at the examiner do's and don'ts that's very important and beside the examiner do's and don'ts i will be looking at three exam papers today i'll be looking at the september december 19 paper so i'll be looking at the september december 19 paper on a blank workspace because this is not available on the practice platform i'll be looking at the march 20 paper on the blank workspace and i'll be looking at the september december 19 paper again but this time for the question number one c on the blank workspace so i have chosen a variety of questions to give you the variety you have in this topic and so that all of you can able to handle this topic the reason of choosing three questions today uh, is the variety you get in this topic and i want to assure that you get every variety done in the webinar today so you are in a confident position of taking on this topic and once the webinar gets over today uh, the incomplete questions you will complete them and you will watch the previous webinars so that's your home assignment let's let's start on with the agenda and let's see what is the examiner expectation of the topic we are starting today which is procedures and evidence okay i'm taking on my word file as i do take uh, every day as like my whiteboard and today being the fourth day the 30th of april let's start on with the objective and see what we need to discuss today okay the objective today is to focus on audit procedures and audit evidence a very interesting and a very important topic audit procedures and audit evidence now in terms of this topic there are three things you need to know uh, first of all you need to understand there are three things uh, there are two things we are discussing today but i'll split them into three number one i need to guide you about a question on audit procedures very carefully in the first part of my webinar today and how would you go about excelling on this secondly i need to guide you about a, a, a question or questions on audit evidence it's not just a question on audit evidence it's questions on audit evidence so on procedure you just have a question that's a singular but on procedures you have variety and i want to cover that variety with you right so there are questions on audit evidence and there is a question on procedure now a question on procedure is very straightforward right the examiner would ask you recommend the audit procedures on a fill in the blank whatever that is right examiner can ask you audit procedures on anything and i'll, I'll be guiding you about that shortly so that's a pretty straightforward question recommend the audit procedure and a fill in the blank but when you look at a question on evidence there are two types of questions uh, which comes in the past paper number one either the examiner ask you comment on the matters comma and explain the audit evidence you should expect to find during the review of the working papers question mark that's one question right which comes on audit evidence and a second question which comes on audit evidence is comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained by the audit team question mark so there are two types of questions which comes on audit evidence now i will be exploring each one of them today and that's the reason i have chosen th i have chosen three questions today right one question on procedure and two questions on audit evidence so i can give you a clear idea about how you go about handling the topic okay let's explore one by one each one of them okay let's first start with audit procedures first and let's look at the examiner expectations for audit procedure now the best way you can prepare for audit procedures for, from an examination point of view is that you read the exam technique article read exam technique article part 4 
and this exam technique article part four is on audit procedures now once you read this article you will have a fair idea of your examiner expectation and you will literally know what you should be doing between uh, what you should be doing when you're writing an audit procedure right uh, Omar, obviously I'll be covering a difference between an audit procedure and an evidence once I switch from a procedure question to an evidence question. So let's let's first formulate what is a procedure and then when I jump to evidence automatically you will get the difference. So you will need to read the exam technique article part four on audit procedure so that you know the examiner expectation. Examiner has given numerous examples of procedures examiner has drafted procedures in the article part four and that is a wonderful article if you have not read it please read it because that's the only way you can refine your procedures from an exam perspective is that clear to everyone so will you be finding time to read this article from a start to end so that you exactly know what you need to do and what you need not to do when you're writing a procedure right now secondly once you've read that uh, make your notes make your notes about the key learnings you got from the article the key learnings you got from the article because that would be really important for your revision you got from the article then obviously once you've made your notes from the article then go and watch the previous webinars recommended by the tutor by recommended by the tutor for audit procedures including the june 2021 including the june 2021 so you will watch the previous webinars after you've read the article and you have made your notes you watch the webinars by the tutor and that would be more interesting then including the june 2021 and you can watch this day four again now that would give you an ideal platform uh, and that will give you an ideal platform so that you can start to practice the past papers practice all the past papers which i have recommended on procedures in my previous webinar right so is that approach clear to all of you how would you go about preparing yourself for uh, for audit procedures uh, in order to uh, overcome the in order to be closer to examiner perspective or examiner expectation sorry right so follow this approach and you will be excellent now let me guide you about a summary of what you should do when you're writing a procedure in exam paper now first of all just do confirm me again that my voice is getting through to all of you right okay thank you very much for that confirmation okay let's make a summary now in terms of the summary I always tell students in my previous webinar and that is what I've taken from the exam technique article of the examiner that what is a good procedure what is a good procedure in the AAA paper first of all you need to understand that a procedure in a AAA paper is found in the question number one right what is a good procedure in AAA paper and uh, what the examiner expect from you number one you need to understand that the question number one uh, which is for 50 marks this particular question uh, includes audit procedure in one of the requirements includes audit procedures in one of the requirement it might be the c requirement or might be the d requirement includes audit procedure in one of the part and on average, uh, there are like five to 10 marks on audit procedures. So the marks vary, right? Five to 10 on audit procedures. The audit procedures asked for, the audit procedures are asked on accounting matters. If you've seen the past papers, the examiner asks you to write audit procedures on share based payment expense. Uh, the examiner asks you to write audit procedures on deferred taxation. Or deferred ex asset examiner ask you to write audit procedures on a joint venture or examiner ask you to write audit procedures on a government grant or examiner ask you to write audit procedures on asset held for sale so the audit procedures in the first question are is asked on accounting matters 
Is that clear to everyone? So you, you are not getting procedures like the double A paper where you used to get procedures on fixed asset or receivable or payable. This is a triple A paper. So you're getting audit procedures on an accounting meta. It can be on any accounting meta. You must have studied in your SBR paper or in your financial reporting paper. And that is that is the reason it's highly recommended that you give the SBR paper prior to the AAA paper so that you have an excellent accounting knowledge when you sit for the AAA paper. So audit procedures are asked on accounting matters. Now, knowing where this question comes in, what is the nature of question? Recommend the audit procedures and it is on the accounting matters. Let's see what your examiner expects from you when you are writing a procedure in the exam paper. You need to understand that each procedure you write in exam paper is worth one mark is worth one mark. So when the examiner says recommend the procedure when the examiner says recommend the audit procedure. Look at the number of marks. Suppose there are six marks. So if there are six marks, then you need to write six procedures. If there are five marks, you need to write five procedures. So each procedure is worth one mark. Now comes the big question how to gain one mark and what is a good procedure? What is a good procedure question mark or how to write a good procedure? Are the three questions valid? Uh, is that the three questions you will have in your mindset as a student and or how to write a good procedure? So have I read your mindset effectively all of you? Okay, let's let's get down to how to write a good procedure and gain one mark. I hope you're all listening to me because there is no yes and no from your side in the chat box. I hope you're all uh, listening to me. My voice is getting through to all of you and you're understanding what I am I writing on the screen, right? Okay, how to gain one mark a good procedure. First of all, when you're writing a good procedure, you need to understand and that a good procedure has to be case specific. You cannot write anything in AAA paper which is out of the case. For example, if the examiner is asking you to write procedures on a government grant, then that government grant will be a paragraph in the case study, right? For example, for example, the examiner asks you to write audit procedures on the government grant for five marks right now what you need to do is you cannot go to the exam hall with a rote learning of accounting procedures no never that's a very bad way of doing the triple a paper the good thing is that when you go to the exam hall you will get a case study question number one and in the case study when the examiner is asking you to write an audit procedure that audit procedure is on the government grant so what will be there in the exam paper? There will be a paragraph on government grant in the case you are reading. So when you come across the paragraph on uh, government grant, suppose you're reading the case, right? While reading the case, the question number one, which is a long case, while reading the case, wherever you get a paragraph on government grant, stop and read it carefully because that paragraph will tell you what procedures will you make on government grant so there will be a paragraph on government grant where the examiner must be explaining about the grant that you got as a company what are conditions associated with the grant what is the tenure of the grant etc so while reading the case wherever you get a para on government grant or whatever whatever accounting matter the examiner has asked for stop and read it carefully now when you stop and read the, the paragraph on the government grant carefully what will you get out of the paragraph on government grant you will get some important information you will you will get some important information about government grant which i refer as a tutor you will get some important information about the government grant while you were reading the case and i refer them as facts so I use the short form facts. Is everyone clear to the bullet number three? So when you're reading the case and you get a paragraph on government grant and you need to make procedures on government grant, stop and read it. 
you will get some important information about the government grant which are basically known as facts right so you get the facts for example uh, the amount of grant for example when you got the grant for example the conditions associated with the grant and how the management has recognized the grant have they recognized the grant as other income or have they recognized the grant as a deferred income so you will get to know about numerous facts about grant now once you know the facts and you know exactly what's happening in the case about the government grant you need to convert the facts to audit procedures because practically whenever the auditor goes for audit so you make procedures on facts you make procedures on the knowledge of business you make procedures on knowledge of the government grant so in the exam paper when you know the facts you will convert the facts and i'll, I'll be demonstrating that in five minutes you will convert the facts to what you will convert the facts to a procedure how many procedures five procedures because you have five marks for example now when you are converting the facts to an audit procedure what is a good procedure what you should be careful about when you're making a procedure what is a good procedure a good procedure and the attributes of a good procedure the attributes of a good procedure is it should have an a it should have an s and it should have a p and this is from the examiner article right examiner article which i recommended you to read examiner says that a good procedure should have an action number one a good procedure should have a source number two and a good procedure should have a purpose in order to get one mark if your procedure has an action your procedure has a source your procedure has a purpose then you are getting one out of one for every procedure so that is what the examiner is telling us that a good procedure have an action number one a source number two and a purpose number three and that is equal to a good procedure so if you want to get one mark per procedure one mark is equal to one procedure and one procedure is equal to a good procedure and a good procedure is equal to a plus s plus p now if you write a procedure uh, when you are practicing at home any of the attribute is missing you will not get one out of one Suppose you write A and S, but you don't write the P, you will get half a mark. Suppose you write A and P, but you don't write the S, you will get half a mark. So if you miss any of the attribute, how many marks will you get? Will you get one out of one? No, you will get 0.5 out of one, right? So is everyone clear with the definition of a good procedure before I demonstrate you what is an action, before I demonstrate to you what is a source, and before I demonstrate to you what is a purpose? So you need to read the case from the case you need to find the facts you will convert the facts into a procedure but when you are writing a procedure you need to assure that a good procedure has the attributes a s p and that's one out of one and a procedure is such an important syllabus area where you can score 100 percent marks so if there are 10 marks of procedure literally you can score 10 out of 10 you cannot even lose a mark provided you look at the bullets i wrote in front of your screen bullet number one two three four five six if you learn these bullets you apply these bullets you will score 10 out of 10 in procedures 100 percent marks in procedures okay let me demonstrate that one mark let's give you an example and then convert that to the past paper for example Let's first start with A, action. A procedure should start with action. A procedure should start with action. I hope you all agree because the literal meaning of the literal meaning of the word procedure means to do something, to do something. Is that clear? Procedure means to do something, right? auditor is doing something procedure means auditor is demonstrating something am i right so procedure should start with an action for example i start my procedure review the board minutes 
have I started my procedure with uh, action review? Is review an action? Review the board minutes, right? Look at the next one. Recalculate, recalculate the amortization expense. So have I started my procedure with a uh, action recalculate? Discuss with discuss with those charged with governance or discuss with management. Have I started my procedure with discuss? Discuss is an action. So whenever you are writing a procedure, you need to start procedure with an action. Or I write my procedure, analyze, analyze the receivable days. Analyze the receivable days. So analyze is a analyze is an action. So are you all getting the sense? So you need to start it with a action. So action means you're doing something. Now after you start a procedure with action, a procedure should have a source. Source. A procedure must have a source. The source means the subject matter. The source means the subject matter. Now look at look at the example I give you above. I, let me do the action in yellow and let me do the source in uh, source in just one minute. Uh, let me do the source in another color. Let me do the source in blue. OK, for example. Review the board minutes, right? So I, if I just copy my list from up here. And I copy them down. OK, just give me some space so I can take this to my next page. For examples can be taken to the next page. OK, for example. OK, source. The source means. A procedure must have a source source means a procedure must have a subject matter. Now see review the board minutes. What's what's the subject matter? What's the source in the first procedure? Review the board minutes. What's the subject matter? What's the source? Everyone very good answers board minutes. So board minutes becomes the source. Recalculate the amortization expense. What's the subject matter? What's the source? What what am I recalculating? Am I recalculating something very specific? Yes, I'm recalculating something very specific amortization expense. So that becomes the subject matter. Discuss with whom? Am I discussing with someone specific? So do you believe that specific becomes the subject matter? So those charged with governance becomes the subject matter. Okay. Analyze the receivable days. Am I analyzing something uh, particular? Am I analyzing something specific? So is that is that the subject matter? Yes, the receivable days. So every procedure should have a subject matter what are you reviewing what are you recalculating what are you with whom are you discussing what are you analyzing so if you ask questions like such to yourself i hope you get the track for example what are you reviewing if you ask a question you will make a good procedure what are you recalculating what are you recalculating if you ask questions like such back at home the chances is you will not make mistakes what are you recalculating ne number next just one minute sorry what with whom with whom are you discussing with whom you are discussing and you will get to the subject matter or what are you analyzing? You will get to the subject matter. So if you ask questions like such with uh, to you yourself, will you get subject matter done in the exam paper? Is that clear to all of you? Are you 100% clear? Okay, the last thing. So the last thing is purpose. A good procedure should have a purpose. A purpose means the objective. The objective of uh, performing. The objective of performing the procedures. Right. The purpose of performing the procedures. Let's let's put them in a green color. 
the purpose of performing the procedure. So what is the objective of performing the procedure? Now, if I just copy my list from up, up again, now see, if I put my list here, how many marks am I getting? Review the board minutes. I have an A, I have an S. Recalculate the amortization expense. I have an A, I have an S. Discuss with those charges governance. I have an A, I have an S. Analyze the receivable day. I have an A, I have an S. Am I getting one mark or am I getting half a mark? I'm getting half a mark, right? So should I write the purpose? Review the board minutes to confirm the approval and the business rationale for example business rationale of acquiring of acquiring the new subsidiary of acquiring the new subsidiary so that becomes my example so can you see this word to confirm and is that what is the objective every time you write objective you say to ensure but every time you write objective, you say to confirm. Now, can you see the three colors, yellow, blue, green? So is it a one mark procedure now? Okay, recalculate the amortization expense to confirm, to confirm the accuracy of the, to confirm the accuracy of the expense recorded. To confirm the accuracy of the expense recorded. So I have a reason. Can you perform a procedure as an auditor without a purpose? Will that be a useless procedure if you don't have an objective? A procedure without an objective is useless. Discuss with those charged with governance to confirm reasons why uh, to confirm reasons why the product has been discontinued. Discontinued, for example. You confirming with the management the reasons why you have discontinued the project to confirm reasons why the product has been discontinued or the basis of the provisions of or the basis of the provisions recognized. So you can discuss anything with the management, right? To confirm the reasons. So most of the time when you're doing a discussion, the purpose is to confirm reasons. So discussions are for reasons. Analyze the receivable days to confirm to confirm whether the customers are struggling to pay over time the customers are struggling to pay over time if the receivable days are increasing then that means the customers are struggling to pay and that will help you in determining the amount of provision allowance for bad debt so to confirm whether customers are struggling to pay for example these are layman procedures right don't do an argument on these procedures but is everyone clear with yellow, blue, green? Is everyone clear with ASP? So will you implement this back at home? Will you implement this in the exam paper? You can use the word confirm or you can use the word ensure, right? So either you say to confirm or you say to ensure. So is, is, is that approach understandable to all of you? So what is the difficulty in a procedure? What is the difficulty in the procedure? Students struggles. So I hope you refine them, you fine tune them. Let's do an exercise and exit from the procedures, right? Let's let's do a real exercise. Uh, let, let me do a recap and I will do exactly the same exercise with you and you will continue this back at home. Look at the exercise number one. See, let me do a recap. What is a good procedure? In the question number one, you get a procedure question, uh, mostly for five, five to 10 marks. The, the procedures are, are on accounting matters. Each procedure is worth one mark. Recommend the audit procedure. How to gain one mark? A good procedure should be case specific. For example, the examiner asks you to write procedures on a garment grant. While reading the case, wherever you get a paragraph on the garment grant, stop and read it carefully. You will get some important information about the grant. Convert the important information to audit procedures. A good procedure have ASP and that's how you make a formula. One mark is equal to one procedure is equal to a good procedure is equal to ASP. And then I give you an example. Action, example, source, example. And the questions you should ask yourself and then come down with purpose. 
can you do one exercise from the september december 19 paper so that you are excellent on audit procedure and we exit from this topic and start with audit evidence and you need to watch my previous webinars as well right okay let's do a drill let's do a drill on audit procedures let's see how much have you understood and how much you concentrate when i'm when i'm speaking it's your test now right drill and audit procedure i'm taking into account the september december 19 paper the question number one let's take that on the screen and let's start doing it now this paper is not on the practice platform right so i am showing you the pdf version of this paper so this paper is not available on the practice platform right so let me show you the pdf okay just one minute can you all see the september december 19 paper in front of your screen here okay that's great if you can all see the september december 19 paper in front of your screen scroll down the paper and you come to the question number one so this is the start of the question number one you scroll down and you come to the requirements in the requirements which is in the exhibit one you know the exhibit one is the email of the partner and in the exhibit one you have to prepare a briefing note and in this briefing note there is a requirement which is for audit procedures you go down there is a requirement coming here c can you all see the c requirement here design the principal audit procedures to be performed in respect of how many marks we have in total for the procedures eight marks so you have eight marks over here and you need to make a procedure number one on the classification of the 48 million dollar investment in paper company so will there be a paragraph about a 48 million dollar investment in paper company in the case paper so will you read that paragraph carefully and convert that paragraph into procedure everyone so will there be a paragraph about classification there will be okay next the garment grant so will there be a paragraph about the garment grant in the paper which you need to convert into procedures so there is no need for rote learning right now once you know you need to write procedures on the investment in paper and you need to write procedures on the garment grant it's so easy you need to write procedures right and you need to write procedures number one on the uh, investment in papers and you need to write procedures on the garment grant how many marks we have for each we had eight in total right so should we allocate four marks to each of them uh, investment in papa four garment grant four i'll do one with you you do the other yourself investment in peppers in garment grant now what is the step one in exam paper you will read the case and you will identify the para identify the para where information is given for peppers and garment grant sorry where information is given about investment in papa and the garment grant investment in papers and garment grant so where information is given in this so this will this be a first step so you will read the case identify the para where information is given for investment in papers in the garment grant in a, in a in a practice platform this question is not available on the practice platform so i'm doing it outside just to guide you on the steps next let's see where is the paragraph on investment and the garment trend you go back to the case study and you sorry you scroll down in the exhibit number one and you sorry exhibit number two you start to read exhibit number two you go down you go down you go down uh, on the first page there is nothing about investment and garment grant you come to the next page on the next page you find the word pepper here so that means this is the paragraph telling us about pepper so this paragraph over here is telling us about the investment of a 48 million dollar the company has done in pepper so this is a big paragraph which the examiner has given to us about investment in pepper will you read this paragraph and you identify the main points from this paragraph and you convert them into writing four audit procedures that's number one right then you go down 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 till the time you find a paragraph on garment grant okay see so easy you there is a heading of a garment grant so this means this paragraph right from here up to here is a paragraph on the garment grant so there is a big paragraph on garment grant here which we should highlight so tell me 
in AAA, do we have rote learning procedures or do we have a situation given by the examiner which we need to read and find the facts and convert the facts to the procedures? So is there a need to go into the exam hall with rote learn procedures? Not at all. I never agree with this that you wrote learn procedures. It's situation based exactly. It's case specific Salva and Abdul Wahab. Excellent. <clears throat> so let me give you an idea. You start with. Just you you start with government grant, right? Uh, let me unhighlight this for a minute. Okay, you have the information here. You just. Okay, you just unhighlight the, the garment grant. Suppose this is a paragraph in the paper and you're reading this. I'm just copying this paragraph and I'm taking this paragraph in my word file. Over here read the case. So let's see how you read the case, right? Suppose you're giving a computer based exam and you're reading the case. I, I'm just copying the case over here for five minutes uh, so I can do a very good analysis of this. And when you're doing in the computer based exams, you can do the highlighting and the highlighting can help you, right? So suppose you're giving a computer based exams and this is the information given to you about the garment grant. Uh, just give me one minute if I can open the practice platform for you. Okay, now I'm reading the case about the garment grant, right? And I go back to my practice platform. Uh, I open the blank workspace because this question is not available on the practice platform. So I open the practice platform blank workspace. I go down. I have the blank workspace. I'll resume my blank workspace. Okay, so I get my blank workspace in front of my screen. I'll open the word processor and in the word processor in the previous classes, previous webinar, whatever I have written over here, I'm just deleting that. Okay, so I'm just deleting everything from here. I'll choose the heading two so that you can see that very clearly and I start to re I need to make an audit procedures on garment grant. Audit procedures on the garment grant for four marks now i need to write the procedures right and procedures are written in bullets right so you can use the bullets you can use the numberings right so you can use the numberings can you see the numberings given here one two three four can you see the bullets given here bullets so you can write the procedures in bullets and numbers right let's let's see how we go about it now in the exam you're reading the information right suppose you're reading this information the government provides grant to organizations which commit to investing in properties to reduce carbon emission and energy consumption grants are also available to organization to promote the benefit of recycling to customer in january 20 x5 rider company received a grant of 20 million dollar is that an important information that rider received a grant of 20 million dollar should i should i highlight this as my first information next the only condition attached to the grant. So is there a condition which I need to verify is condition and important information? The only condition attached. So as an auditor, should I verify the condition? The only condition attached to the grant is that half of the amount must be used to upgrade existing assets. So half the amount must be used to upgrade the existing assets to make them environmental friendly. So I need to confirm whether the company has exactly spent half the amount on upgrading the existing assets to make them environmental friendly or not none of the amount received has yet been spent but it is planned that it will be used to finance the capital expenditure across the group property portfolio so none of the amount has yet been spent so none is yet yet been spent so I can discuss with management what is their intention when they need to spend this amount by what time but they plan to invest they plan to spend it right they plan to spend it on the capital expenditure across the group property portfolio but when they're spending it on the capital expenditure half of that should go to the upgrading of the existing assets right the other half of the grant will be used to fund an advertising campaign so the other half should be used to fund the advertising campaign so as an auditor I should be very particular that half should go to funding the advertising campaign according to the group finance director the full 20 million dollar is included within operating profit 
in the projected group profit and loss account have they done the right accounting treatment by taking the full amount of the grant in the operating profit or they should they record it as a deferred income initially and when they utilize it they should take it into the income is is that the right treatment of taking the full garment grant into the other income even though they've not yet utilized it so should they record it initially as a deferred income and later when they start to utilize it they should start taking it to their uh, profit and loss account is that right so do i have important information in the case where i can convert that to procedures now for example I, i'm not i'm just writing things over here you read the case number one number two have you identified facts from the case have you identified facts from the case number two identify facts so have you identified facts from the case everyone in the green we have right now once you have identified uh, the facts from the case highlighted in green above highlighted in green above what you need to do number three you need to convert the facts to procedure convert the facts to procedures and you need to remember four marks is equal to four procedures and is equal to a s p and then only you score four out of four see how i go about it if i'm writing my first procedure i'm writing it on the microsoft word i hope that doesn't distract you i'm not just writing it on the practice platform just to save my time i hope you are fine with that because over the last three days i have guided you a lot about the blank workspace and the practice platform right so just to save my time i'm i'm putting it on the microsoft word and it, uh, that i hope you're not there is no issues with you right procedure number one i put up number one procedure here in january the company received a grant so i should review the grant agreement i should review the grant agreement to confirm number one to confirm number one the amount of grant received and the date and the date received and further to confirm the conditions associated with the grant with the grant now a lot of time the student makes two procedures in exam paper review the grant agreement to confirm the amount of grant and the date of grant and the second procedure review the grant agreement to confirm the conditions associated with grant no you can save your time you make one procedure with two reasons you will get two marks in exam paper this is a time saving technique rather than writing review the grant agreement two times so review the grant agreement is review a uh, action yellow is grant agreement a source blue and is confirm a reason green to confirm the amount and to confirm the condition so is is that the reason am i reviewing the grant agreement for the amount for the date for the conditions so rather than you write three procedures review the grant agreement for the amount one review the grant agreement for the date two review the grant agreement for the conditions three no write it professionally as i wrote in front of you so how many marks will i get for this procedure i will straight away get two marks number two half the amount is to be spent on upgrading the assets and half is to be spent on advertising campaign but have they spent any amount yet have they confirmed have they spent any amount yet but do they plan to in do they plan to spend it do i exactly know when when they plan to is spend it next six months should i discuss with management the plan by when they plan to upgrade the assets and by when they plan to uh, uh, do the advertising campaign okay you can also do this one student is asking a question festal so i'm just putting it on the screen uh, he's asking can we do the bank statement yes you can do the bank statement right okay is is my sound getting through to everyone okay that's good review the bank statement to confirm the receipt of the grant to confirm the receipt so from the agreement you confirm the amount and from the bank statement you confirm the receipt of the grant of dollar 20 million so has 20 million dollar come to your bank account yes so is review a procedure definitely is bank statement a source 
yes it is and uh, is the reason is the reason valid definitely we we are to confirm the receipt not the amount the receipt so amount is one receipt is second so good to good procedure right it will give me another one mark and i get to three next should i discuss with management should i discuss with rider company management specific please uh, refrain from writing the word management in the exam paper write the name of the company before it discuss with management is a very journal word discuss with riders management riders management is is that important discuss with riders management the uh, their plan and timeline their plan and timeline to confirm by when to confirm by when the grant amount will be utilized on upgrading assets on upgrading assets and funding the advertising campaign and funding the advertising campaign and funding the advertising campaign so i should discuss discuss is a sorry discuss is a procedure action riders management riders management is the source uh, to confirm by when the amount will be spent and uh, on the on upgrading the assets and on funding the campaign right so that's the reason yes i have already uh, ahmed kamal i have discussed with rider management the plan to plan and timeline to confirm by when the grant amount will be utilized so will they plan to in, uh, utilize it in the next six months so on and so forth so one mark so have i got my four marks so far everyone have i got my four marks but is, is this is a webinar right so should i teach you more rather than stopping at four you go further have they recognized the full amount of the grant which is the wrong accounting treatment so should I discuss with them why have they recognized the full amount when indeed nothing has been utilized yet? So should I do another discussion? Discuss with uh, Riders uh, Finance Director. I think that would be more appropriate to discuss with. So I, I put a specific person here, right? Discuss with Rider Finance Director the reason why the full amount has been recognized as income to confirm or understand the finance director rationale finance director rationale should i understand the finance director rationale why he has utilized the full amount into other income which is a wrong accounting treatment but he must be having he must be having some rationale right am i right he must be having a rational right so should i should i understand uh, should i understand his rational why before i tell him you are wrong so discuss is a procedure again but we are discussing with a specific person rider finance director please try to change person if you are discussing anything accounting discuss that with the finance director if you're discussing something with uh, uh, regarding employees discuss with the human resource director so please try to change the position of management the reason why the full amount has been recognized so am i discussing with management the right thing why have they recognized the full amount as income to confirm and understand to confirm and understand the finance director rationale before i tell him you're wrong so will i get another one mark for understanding the rationale of the finance director is everyone clear and should I then inform him that uh, the full amount shouldn't be recognized in the operating income because the grant has not been utilized and it should be recorded as a deferred income? Is that right? So are you getting the track everyone please confirm me. So did i performed anything unusual which i taught you you uh, you read the case you identify the facts 
you converted the facts into a procedure did i deviated you from a yellow green and blue or did i use the yellow green and blue every time right so i went to five so i hope you understand that when you are making a good procedure it's so simple number one you just quickly read the case read the case number two identify the facts and then convert facts to procedure and when you're converting a fact to a procedure remember a plus s plus p is, is that easy? No, colors colors are just for the classroom, right? Just to give you a track. Okay, there is a, a there is an S, there is a P. Obviously, you're not doing colorings in exam paper. Obviously, that, that's just a classroom, right? Uh, the, I hope who asked this question, Rosemary. Okay, is that clear? So is, is the colors guiding you ASP? And will you do that at home ASP? So is, is it difficult? And now tell me what is the difficulty with the procedure? You need to watch my previous webinars. In every webinar, I do ASP. ASP. You watch my three previous webinars I recommended you, and you will be so excellent on this topic. So, will you convert the investment yourself? Investment in paper? Will you take the paragraph of investment in paper at home? Will you read this para investment in paper? Will you identify facts and will you convert the facts into procedure everyone that's wonderful that's wonderful you can even share the screenshots on the whatsapp group so if, if i get time i can just uh, pick up your screenshot and say good wonderful so i randomly choose your screenshots and reply to you so is that clear this is your homework right on investment in papa Right, so uh, procedures are done. I hope you got an interesting insight into procedures in the last one hour since we started the webinar. So one hour into the webinar, how confident you are feeling that you can really take on this topic to an excellent level in the next one month. Can you take this uh, to an excellent level in the next one month? So how was the first one hour today? Did you gain something in the first one hour? You did that's good thank you thank you very much right so let's start on the next journey before i give you the break in the next part when i uh, before i give you the break number one we need to start working on the next topic which is audit evidence and there was a question from a student what's the difference between a procedure and an evidence so let's let's start on the topic audit evidence now okay let me just make it bifurcated so everyone knows we're starting with the next topic now audit evidence okay let's start with audit evidence and let's make a very good approach on audit evidence as well right just like procedure now i go step by step a bit slow so i i can just guide you about how you should go about writing your procedures okay thank you very much Naman. okay uh, so Raya, I have already written my answer on the word file so uh, that when I share with you, you will get the answer. I, I didn't wrote it on the blank sheet, right? It's, it's on my support file, which I share with you every day, right? So don't don't worry about it, right? Okay, come back audit evidence. Now I told you that in in terms of audit evidence, there are two types of questions which comes in exam paper. There are two types of questions which come on this topic which comes on this topic in past papers and you should be prepared for both number one of the question which comes on this let me copy this from above i just wrote those questions at the beginning of the webinar today so rather than wasting my time i can just copy those questions here control c see how that's that's an ease of computer whether it's the microsoft word or it's the practice platform you can just copy paste things Control V, two types of questions, right? Which comes on evidence. Let's understand each one of them and then I give you the break. 
and then we'll explore the questions after the break the first question is a very common question which comes a lot of time the second one comes but comes rarely right so the first and the second question let me first get to the question number one here control c let's analyze the question number one analyze the first question just like i did the analysis of procedures okay now when you look at the first question which is very common in the past paper and you copy it down and you start with the analysis see this question is asking so many things from you the question is asking you to comment number one but comment on the matters that's number one matters and then there is a break in the question i hope you can all see the break which which is overlooked in the exam hall there is a break in the question and and then the question asks you explain comment explain comment is on the matter and explain is the audit evidence not the procedures right explain is the audit procedures explain is the audit procedure audit evidence sorry explain the audit evidence you should expect to find during the review of the working paper file who is the you here who is the you you is the manager right in the triple a paper so first of all understand the you you is the manager in the case study which you are now you need to step into the shoes of the manager for next one hour you is the manager in the case study right and the examiner is saying you should comment on the matters and you should explain the evidence that would be in the file while you are reviewing the working papers what is the manager doing the manager is doing the review of the working paper file right review the working paper file do the management review the working paper file yes so to get an assurance that work has been performed brilliantly there is no problem no error in the work and just to get the reasonable assurance on the work now the manager reviews the working paper and while the manager is reviewing the working paper the examiner is asking you that being a manager you have to do two things first you need to comment on the meta and secondly you need to explain the audit evidence while you are reviewing the working paper file now what exactly your examiner expects from you when the examiner asks you comment on the matters it's so simple because the matter given in the exam paper when you are attempting a question on evidence right the matter given in the question on evidence is what matter it's an accounting matter so whenever an accounting matter comes in triple a paper it's so simple what to comment on the accounting matter every time you are commenting on an accounting matter even when you are attempt an audit risk question when you attempt a risk of material misstatement question and you're looking at an accounting treatment what comment you do the same comment you're doing here comment on the matter the first comment you're doing is you're commenting on the materiality of the accounting matter materiality so you comment on the materiality the second comment you do on the accounting matter is itself the accounting treatment you comment on the accounting treatment and the third comment you do is the risk of material misstatement if the accounting treatment is wrong if the accounting treatment is wrong then you will say what is the risk of material misstatement that means you comment on the understatement and the overstatement that's exactly what you do in audit risk that's exactly what you do in a risk of material misstatement am i right so how many comments are you doing three why are you doing comment on the materiality accounting treatment and risk of material misstatement because the matter here is which the matter here is accounting matter the matter could be ifrs2 the matter could be ifrs5 the matter could be ifrs3 the matter could be is 20 the matter could be is 21 the matter could be is 36 38 40 41 anything so when you are a manager and you're looking at an accounting meta the first of all you will comment on the materiality you will comment on the accounting treatment and you will comment on the risk of material misstatement that what is under and overstated only when the treatment is wrong a lot of time in the past paper in the question on audit evidence the accounting treatment was right even 
so then you need to support the accounting treatment then automatically the risk of material misstatement will go off and I'll, I'll show you that when you comment on the materiality the new marking scheme is one mark you will get for the comment on the materiality then you will comment on the accounting treatment you will get one mark for the comment on the accounting treatment and then you comment on the risk of material misstatement and you get one mark for the comment on the under and over statement so there is like three good marks when you're commenting on the meta so the marking scheme has revised i think in in my previous webinar i used to tell you 1.5 marks but when uh, i am looking at the 2021 exams this is an area where the marking scheme have been skimmed down i think even in my last december 20 webinar i guided about the marking scheme of one so is everyone clear with the breakdown of comment on the meta and the reason why are we commenting on materiality accounting treatment and risk of material misstatement is everyone clear okay that's great uh, accounting treatment i'll be exploring that shortly and it's not that simple perhaps if you're understanding it's too simple but i've given you the breakup but i'll bring the twist and challenges in next five minutes okay the next thing you need to do is explain what do you need to explain you need to explain the evidence evidence where you need to explain the evidence in the working papers what evidence will you expect to find in the working paper tell me what evidence you will find in the working paper file while you're reviewing the working paper file what evidence will you find in the working paper file now imagine imagine you have a working paper file in front of you and you are conducting a review imagine you have a working paper file in front of you and you are reviewing the working paper file right imagine the typical box file right even though we are in a technological era but we still imagine the box file right full of papers full of papers right and you are reviewing the working paper file so imagine you have a working paper file in front of you i hope you're all imagining that and you are reviewing the file so what will you find in the file what will you find in the file there are good answers coming from students some students are saying papers documents some students are saying supporting documents wonderful good answers so what will you find in the files in the file you will file in the file you will find the working papers of the auditor am i right working papers of the audit team so as a manager when you look at the working paper file what are you finding in the working paper file you're finding the working papers of the audit team now there can be so many types of working papers which are put in the in the file there can be so many types of working paper so many types of working paper put in file by the team now for example for example let me give you an example here suppose we bring the same question we were doing above here this one the garment grant right suppose this question is not on procedures suppose this question is not on procedure right let's convert this question to comment on the matters and explain the evidence suppose you get a question in the exam paper on government grant here and this question now is having a different requirement suppose this question is asking you comment on the matters and explain the evidence right it will just take five minutes and we'll go off this requirement okay if you get this question in the exam and the requirement of this question suppose is comment on the matters and explain the evidence right are you all comfortable that i'm just taking the question on a procedure and converting that to a question on uh, audit evidence right okay you get this question government grant and you know my lecture and you go to the exam hall the very first thing you will do in the exam paper is you will comment on the matters and then you will tell examiner explain the audit evidence suppose you have like uh, something like uh, seven marks you have seven marks for this question right comment on the matters and explain the evidence now you are sitting in the exam hall and you remember my lecture day four of the webinar you say the sir told us that the first comment i need to do is on the materiality so i'll start first with i'll say the amount of grant 
that is dollar 20 million is a fill in the blank percentage of the total assets obviously the total assets must be given in the question number one i'm just ignoring it but i'm just guiding you on a skeleton answer the amount of grant that is 20 million dollar is fill in the blank percentage of the total assets which is material to the financial statements follow stop you get your first one mark after the follow stop you get to the next the government grant the government grant received should be recorded in should be recorded as deferred income should be recorded as deferred income until it is utilized by the management or by the rider management right okay the grant should be recorded as a deferred income until it is utilized by the management when it can be taken to when it can be when it can be recognized as income when it can be recognized as income so initially it is your liability right till the time you go into and recognize it as an income right no need to give references there is no marks for references of ice 20 here so many times in my previous webinar i've guided you on that no need to quote ice 20 you need to quote the accounting treatment you get marks for accounting treatment right not for ice 20 quoting the grant received should be recorded as a deferred income until it is utilized by the management when it can be recognized as an income currently have i wrote the accounting treatment in the context that it should be recognized as a deferred income until uh, until it is utilized by the management when it can be recognized as an income i get one mark for writing the brief accounting treatment of the government grant and then i put a fuller stop and i say because the grant is because the grant is recognized in full as other income because the grant is recognized as full in as other income even though even though it's not utilized it's not utilized thus currently thus currently the other income is overstated the other income is overstated and the deferred income or the liability is understated the deferred income or the liability is understated is understated am i right i get my last one mark three marks in this paragraph but see how much i wrote you cannot just drag the treatment unnecessarily unless and until it's required the grant is a very short accounting treatment right the grant is a very short accounting treatment but I'll, I'll just be showing you another accounting treatment over which you have to write lines and lines and lines but grant is such a short accounting treatment you can save your time so can you all see the three marks comment on the matter is clear to everyone is comment on matter clear to everyone how i went about it is that the same way you write a risk is that the same way you write an audit risk answer is that the same way you write a risk of material misstatement answer you do right great so now once you have you have comment how many marks have you got out of seven no we don't consider the impact on audit opinion right kamil this is a question on audit evidence so you just keep yourself down to risk this is not a question on audit report right where you think about the impact on opinion right so don't do that never do that so how many marks are we left with uh seven minus three four so how many evidence now when i am reviewing the working paper file what evidence will i find what evidence will you find will you find in the working papers working paper file of government grant now because we have done the uh, the answer above what evidence will you find in the working paper file of government grant you have the answer above so i think if i am a manager or you are a manager the very first thing i will find in the file is the copy of the grant agreement 
So will there be a copy of the grant agreement in the file? Why am I writing the word copy? Because it's a management document. So in my working paper file, will there be a copy of the grant agreement? There will be right. So copy of the grant agreement to confirm. Why will why will there be a copy of the grant agreement in my file to confirm the date? To confirm the amount and the conditions associated with grants so you have to write it in the exam paper right so you start with the word copy and you then write the word confirm right so when you're writing an evidence you need to write confirming again okay next will i have a copy of the bank statement in my working paper file copy of uh, sorry just one minute copy of bank statement in my file as well which the manager will review so the manager will find a copy of the bank statement in my file to confirm the receipt of 20 million dollar to confirm the receipt of dollar 20 million uh, what else will the manager get in my file will he get uh, notes of discussions with the management notes of discussion uh, with a rider management which i had uh, to confirm the rationale of uh, to, to confirm their plans of utilizing the grant to confirm uh, to confirm plan of utilizing the grant right okay will i have another notes of discussion again notes of discussion again in the file for another discussion i had with the finance director notes of discussion with finance director to confirm the rationale of recording 20 million dollar as an income to confirm the rationale of recording the full amount as other income so a procedure start with an action right but when you're writing an evidence in the file in the file you have working papers right so either you have a copy of something or you have a notes of something the copy and notes is defining the working papers, right? Right, so these are forms of working paper and the last one. Uh, did what what else we had? Sorry, I'm just missing the point. I'm going up. Uh, the last point we had discussed with writer finance director. Okay, that's that's the only thing, right? So fine. So if if you are a manager, how many working papers have you found in the file? You found a copy, you found a copy, you found a note, you found a note. So do you all agree that all this is evidence? Working papers. Do you agree a copy? A copy is a working paper. Uh, a copy is a working paper. A copy of a management document. A copy of a management document is a working paper in the exam. OK, do you understand the notes? Notes of discussion is a working paper in the exam paper. Okay, do you understand uh, even if you're doing a recalculation, what evidence will you have for recalculation? You will have results of recalculation, results of recalculation. So if you're doing, re if you uh, are doing recalculation, if the manager is reviewing your file, what will you see in the file for recalculation? The manager will see in your file for recalculation, what results of recalculation? So there are different forms of working paper, right? No, uh, you, uh, uh, Amu Sam, you basically ask for original when you're performing work. But when you develop your working paper file, do you put the original in your working paper file or do, do you put the copy in the working paper file? Right, you put the copy. So it, when you are working, you are working on the original, right? But when you are developing a working paper file, will the manager see the original in the working paper file or will the manager see the copy in the working paper file? Definitely the copy, right? Uh, receipt of the grant payment Bahawal is the copy of the bank statement, right? So in in the uh, in the uh, working paper file, you will have the copy of the bank statement. I wrote that as number two evidence on top. Yes, definitely, Kripa. The test of controls are also part of working paper. You have results of test of controls in the working paper file. Everything the auditor perform is it documentary? Everything the auditor perform is a documentary. 
right and and can there be something without copy notes and results in the working paper file for example in your working paper you have a representation letter so will you say a copy of the representation letter no you will just say a representation letter because representation letter is is what belongs to the auditor right so you will have the representation letter in the working paper file representation letter you will not say copy of the representation letter so you will simply say representation letter because it's it's in the original form so a lots of working paper goes into the file in the form of copy i hope you agree a lot of working paper goes into the file as notes a lot of working paper goes in the file as like results and a lot of working papers goes in form the in 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 an in an original form right yes uh, emails will be in the original form if the email has been done by the auditor to the management if there is any need of taking emails in the exam paper but i've never seen emails coming in the exam paper in any context either it's a copy it's a note as a result it's a representation letter please watch my previous webinar sanoop uh, and there are many other students asking the same question i've covered so many types of evidence in my previous webinars apart from copy notes results and representation letter right so is is the working paper form clear to all of you so is is the nature of question clear how you how you develop a procedure and how you develop a working paper right so how you start a procedure tell me how you start a procedure with what with action and how you start a, how you start writing evidence in the in the in the uh, exam what's the starting point of the evidence when you're writing an evidence what's the starting point wp working paper per plus copy copy notes results working paper you start writing it with a working paper and do you have the source copy of grant agreement do you have the source notes of discussion with management do you have source even so working paper plus source plus purpose so only the way you start it is different so you start the evidence with a working paper and please remember the different forms of working paper i wrote above but when you are writing a procedure a procedure starts with just one minute procedure starts with action plus the source plus the purpose so the, it's it's only the start which is different right it's only the start which is different the rest remains the same are you all comfortable with it so working papers how many types of working papers are there on my page in front of you notes copy results representation no working paper is a source look look at this uh, who asked this question uh, maria look at this copy copy is a working paper right but copy of what copy of the grant agreement right the grant agreement is a source copy of what copy of what that what maria is the source copy of bank statement what is the bank statement the source of which you had a copy notes of discussion with rider management with whom you had a discussion you had discussion with rider management so rider management is a source so i hope you all agree that the yellow again the yellow is the working papers let me do the coloring again the yellow is a working paper the grant agreement again is the source the grant agreement is the source the bank statement is the source the same colors i can use over here the discussion with rider management is the source sorry rider management is the source and uh, finance director is the source and again every time i wrote it i wrote confirm confirm is to be in green confirm is green confirm is green i hope maria you are clear now confirm is in green and confirm is in green right so again it's the same way so you have the copy you have the working paper in yellow you have the source in blue and you have the purpose in green and the same way goes with procedure in procedure you have the action in yellow 
you have the source in blue and you have the purpose in green is everyone clear and if you have further questions please do watch my previous webinars on evidence uh, and you will gain more knowledge so i've given you the hyperlinks right in my presentation which day is an is an illogical question see my powerpoint presentation i've given you the hyperlinks you just need to click on them and you reach there salva so can you see the hyperlinks of my previous webinars just click on them and reach the destination or copy them in the browser and reach okay so how how has been the day so far we are wrapping up another topic evidence but not the full evidence after the break we have another exercise on evidence because that's not the end of evidence there's much more to learn on evidence but have you gained concept of comment on the matters marking scheme have you gained how you go down with evidence and please watch the previous webinars here three hours plus three hours plus three hours nine plus the webinar you're watching today total 12 hours will that refine your comment on matters will that refine your working papers will that refine the action source and purpose so i hope you enjoyed the session so far uh, it's time for a break now and uh, right uh, we'll resume at 10:15 right 10:15 pakistan standard time it's almost psychologically 10 o'clock now in pakistan so in 15 minutes 10:15 I'll be meeting you back uh, until the end of the class. We'll do the exercise on evidence, which is the, another question which comes on evidence. I will be guiding you about the marking scheme of that, and I will be giving you some drillings of the past paper as well, so that you are excellently prepared for this topic in the exam paper. So have a break, relax yourself, come back to the webinar again. Don't miss the last one hour because that is another question on evidence, which is very different from the one we just did. So 10:15 pm please back to the classroom i hope you heard it loud and clear everyone okay when is the break ending can you all confirm me so i just can be assured that you heard it 10 15 pm break will be over and we will resume and i'm putting this to all of you in the chat box right so off to a break have have a cup of tea cup of coffee come back fresh and we'll spend another 60 or 75 minutes on another episode of evidence okay please do drop your feedback uh, if you fail to drop so on the session so far and the overall learnings from the webinar so far and i'll see you right after the break of 15 minutes i'm, I'm muting myself right thank you
Okay, welcome back everyone. I hope all of you can hear me. Uh, just please confirm that so I can start with the last part of the day four. Okay, that's great. That's wonderfully great. All of you can hear me. So let's let's resume uh, where we left and let's start with the final part of procedures and audit evidence. Now, as I was discussing with you prior to the break, that evidence, there are two types of questions, right? Uh, we just completed one type of question prior to the break. So now let's take a look at the second type of question which comes on evidence, which is right here. I'm just copying it and I'll take it to a new page. So when you take a printout, you have a tidy looking support file. Okay, on the new page, uh, the second type of question which comes on evidence, the second type of question on evidence. And I will be solving it a bit as well. Okay, and this is the second type of question on evidence right in front of your screen. Comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence. Now, this question has come less times in the past paper. Now, when you look at this question, it's a pretty simple question asking you comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained by the team. So what do you need to do? You need to do the comment. Comment on what? Comment on the sufficiency and the appropriateness of the evidence. Which is. Obtained by the team. So will will the evidence be given in the exam paper to you? Because the examiner is saying obtained by the team. So will the examiner tell you in the case study what evidence has been obtained by the team? Then only you can I comment on it. So will the evidence obtained by the team given in the uh, case study everyone? Then only you can comment on it, right? Right, so. Definitely right, so the evidence obtained by the team will be in the case study. What what you need to do in a question like such? The evidence obtained by the team. Will be given in the case study will be given in the case study. I'll just show you that. Will be given in the case study. We'll solve a case study on it. Don't worry about it. Evidence obtained by the team will be given in the case study. Now what you need to do you will you will read the evidence they have obtained. It might be right. It might be wrong. They might have obtained the right evidence. They might have obtained a wrong evidence. So you need to comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained. I'm using the short form S and A. I hope you can understand that. S and A is sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained. You need to comment on it. Now when you're commenting on it. You need to be very clear. You are commenting basically on the issues or on the shortcomings or on the. Uh, you're commenting on the issues and shortcomings in the evidence obtained. So if you think uh, evidence was not rightly obtained or the evidence was inappropriate or the evidence was insufficient, so you will comment on it, right? So you will comment on the issues. You will comment on the shortcomings in the evidence obtained. So you will read the case study and wherever you think the evidence obtained by the team is insufficient or inappropriate, you will just keep commenting on it and you will tell examiner why the evidence obtained by the team is uh, is insufficient or why that evidence obtained by the team is inappropriate. So why the evidence obtained is insufficient and why the evidence obtained is inappropriate and for every comment. How many marks will you get for every comment one mark per comment so why the evidence gathered by the team is insufficient or why the evidence gathered by the team is inappropriate every time you focus on the why you explain examiner the why because when you are commenting your comment cannot be without why you cannot just highlight the problem but you need to tell why it is a problem right 
So if there is an issue in the evidence, you need to explain why. If there is a shortcoming in the evidence, you need to explain why. So why the evidence obtained is insufficient and why the evidence obtained is inappropriate. Every time you write this, you get one mark per comment. One mark per comment. And I'll, I'll be doing an exercise on that to guide you how you do the why comment. Now try to understand one thing, but the student gets confused just like the topic we were doing yesterday, ethical professional issues where the student gets confused with professional issues. Now, rather than you go into the classification and in the exam you are confused, is it sufficient? No. Is it appropriate? What is sufficiency? No. What is appropriateness? Should, should I tell examiner this is insufficient? No. Should I tell examiner this is inappropriate? And you're wasting your time. Just like, should I put it as an ethical issue? No. Should I put it as a professional issue? Rather than you come out of sufficiency and appropriateness and you think about, that when you are reading the case, when you're reading the case, you will find somewhere in the case, somewhere in the case that the evidence gathered by team. Now look at the word I'm using now. Evidence gathered by the team is not adequate. See, I, I've come out of the classification. You will find somewhere in the case that the evidence gathered by the team is not adequate. Annotate, annotate it, annotate it. So wherever you find the evidence is in uh, is not adequate, highlight it, then highlight it, then highlight it because you need to write an answer. So wherever you find that the evidence is not adequate, just annotate it and then later explain why you believe evidence is inadequate is not adequate so come out of the classification that uh, is it sufficient is it appropriate yes you should know the literal meaning of the word sufficiency and appropriateness but in the exam if you waste time on the classification then that's the big problem you are a manager the manager don't do the classification i was very clear on that on the day three yesterday i hope you all remember that so are you presenting this answer this way are you presenting this answer this way in the exam paper like this? You're making two columns and in the one column you're saying uh, sufficiency. And in the other column, uh, sorry, in the other column you're saying uh, appropriateness. Is that is that the way to present the answer? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So is, is the examiner asking you to classify from the from the case study, what is sufficient? Is it an F8 paper? Is it a multiple choice question paper which ask you that is it sufficient, true or false? Is it appropriate, true or false? Is that is that the paper you're doing? So are you taking a tension or a stress level of classifying the issue in sufficiency and appropriateness or are you taking, uh, are you focusing on explaining why the evidence is inadequate? What is right approach? What is right approach everyone? Explaining the problem or classifying the problem? So this is absolutely wrong way, right? I'm deleting it. Now now look look at an example, right? Yes, for the, for the sake of knowledge, for the sake of knowledge, no doubt. Even though you do this in the F8 paper, but I don't know why you forget forget this. Uh, for the sake of knowledge, you know sufficiency relates with the sample size right and when you talk about appropriateness appropriateness relates with reliability how the evidence is reliable uh, and the evidence is from the right source evidence is reliable evidence is reliable right so you're looking at the reliability of the evidence when it comes to appropriate or evidence is from the right source it's from the right source that is appropriateness so evidence the sample size of the evidence is a sufficiency the reliability and the right source is the appropriateness yes evidence must be credible credible is the appropriateness sufficiency is the quantity of the evidence right and appropriateness is the quality but are you concerned about classifying it in the exam paper are you are you confusing yourself in the exam paper to judge is it sufficient is it appropriate or are you just thinking about is it adequate or is it inadequate as as a broader term it's a quality 
Is that clear to everyone? This is the F8 knowledge, right? Sufficiency and appropriateness. You do so much time in the F8 paper. Now let's let's give you an idea how how you go about with a question like such. Let's let's do a drilling so that you're clear. Drilling, and I'm taking the September, December 19 paper. This is not on the practice platform. So again, I need to show you the PDF copy on your screen. September, December 19 paper on your screen. And this time we are looking at the question number. No, sorry, we're looking at the March 20 paper. Sorry, we're looking at the March 20 paper. Uh, the March 20 paper. And in the March 20 paper, it was perhaps the question number two where we got a question on sufficiency and appropriateness. So let me show you that. This is a question number two. I hope all of you can see this question two of the March 20 paper. Let me put that on the word file for you. Uh, we are doing the drilling not of September December 19 paper. We are doing the drilling of the March 2020 paper. Question number two, not the full question number two, a part of it. Let me show you the part. You go down the question number two of the uh, March 20 paper and uh, you will see a requirement here. Look at the requirement A, but A2. Look at this. L leave A1. A1 is about fraud, which is the knowledge. Look at this, the one I'm highlighting. Can you read the requirement coming here? Just in one minute. A2, A3. And tell me you're ready. Okay, should I just copy this question and explain you the marking scheme before I talk about the answer? 11 marks. Okay, a lot of times the students don't read the question carefully, which is a big problem. And I always believe that reading a question carefully results in success. So a lot of times the students are in so rush. They fail to understand the question. If you fail to understand the question, will you write a good answer? Never. You will never write a good answer if you fail to understand the question. See how important is, is it to understand the question. In respect of the development cost, number one. And in respect of the trade receivable. So how many issues we have to work upon? We have the first issue, which is uh, development cost number one. And we have the second issue, which is trade receivables, right? Number two. Right, we have two issues. Now what we have to do for two issues in respect of the development cost and trade receivable colon comment. So the very first thing we have to do is comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained, right? So the first thing we have to do is comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained. That's one under the development cost. So under the development cost, we first need to comment on the sufficiency uh, and appropriateness of the evidence. That's number one. And number two, we need to comment. We need to recommend. We need to recommend what actions and uh, including. Can you see this word including? Is that a separate requirement? Including further evidence which should be obtained. Further procedure or further evidence? Further procedure or further evidence? Is, is there a difference? Is the examiner asking for evidence? And how do you how do you start evidence? Do you start evidence with review recalculate? Do you start evidence with uh, action or do you start evidence with a working paper? You start evidence with a working paper copy of notes of. I hope you under you uh, you recall it. That's good. So we need to comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence. Then we need to write actions and actions and evidence actions and further evidence. So how many things we need to do for every requirement? Three. The same for trade receivable and the same for the development cost. Now try to understand the difference between. a uh, uh, difference between actions and evidence. This is a very common jargon in the AAA paper. I hope you all agree with me. Uh, this is a very common jargon in the AAA paper actions, but a lot of times the students are unaware of how what is the purpose of action and how to write it. 
so many times and you do a hundred marks paper for triple a you come across the word known as actions try to understand it once forever in whichever question in whichever question you come across you come across the term action action means something sorry action means steps taken by the auditor steps taken by the auditor to resolve an issue in the case study action the purpose the purpose of action means to resolve an issue what is the purpose of a procedure the purpose of a procedure is to gather evidence the purpose of a procedure is to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence right the purpose of an action what is the purpose of an action to resolve something so in in order to resolve something you take an action so action means steps taken by the auditor to resolve something of an issue in the case study action do you believe action is a verb and just like a procedure just like a procedure because it is it is an action it should start with something like discuss because it's an action you might need to start it with a review right because it's it's, it's an action by default, it's an action. So there is a lot of similarity between a procedure and an action, but you need to understand the procedure is developed. Procedure is developed to gather evidence. Procedure is developed to gather evidence, but action is developed to resolve an issue. Action is developed to resolve an issue. Most of the time, because you're resolving an issue, and you're resolving an issue with the management so most of the time most of the time most of the time the most appropriate action the most appropriate action is discuss or is inquire i hope you're getting my point because you you are resolving something right and assume when you're resolving something with whom are you resolving something with the management there might be a problem between you and the management and you want to resolve it there might be a disagreement between you and the management and you're resolving it uh, the management has recognized the government grant in full you want to resolve the matter how would you resolve the matter without discussing will you discuss with the finance director the right accounting treatment to resolve it will you tell you will you tell the finance director that as per is 20 this is the wrong accounting treatment so do you believe discussion in most contexts is the most common action taken by the auditor do you all agree with me? So is, is everyone clear so far so forth? Waiting for your replies. Right. So what is the examiner asking in the question from March 20? Comment on the adequacy of the evidence. Actions. And further evidence. Right. So action is taken to resolve an issue. And most of the time, the most common action is to discuss with management because without discussing with management, can you resolve an issue? Without discussing with rider company management, can you change the accounting treatment? Tell me without discussing with rider finance director, can you can you change the accounting treatment of the government grant? Can you No. So do, do you believe you need to uh, you need to take an action? So please understand the literal meaning of the word action, procedure and evidence. They all came in one class today. Okay, let's start the journey. Let's look at the problems in the development cost. I'll do it and you do it for the trade receivable, right? So I'm doing the development cost in the webinar. And you will do the trade receivable as your home assignments. Is that clear to everyone? So let me do a drilling on comment actions and further evidence. Let's let's start the journey. Okay, so I am working on the development cost. In the webinar. 
how many marks I have uh, in total 11 is the examiner saying marks are split. No examiner said you have total 11 marks. Now it's up to me. I consume more marks in development cost and less on trade receivable. For example, I write seven marks on development cost and four on trade receivable. I can do that right because examiner is not binding me. So I have 11 marks. Everything I write is worth one mark. Every comment. Every comment is worth one mark. I hope you all agree with me. One mark per comment. Uh, every action I write is one mark per action. Plus every evidence I write is one mark per evidence. So how many how many total points I should have 11. Irrespective, I have more points in development cost and less in trade receivable or I have more points in trade receivable and less in development cost. But my total number of points should be how much everyone? Eleven. Thank you. Okay, let's start the journey from the paper. Okay, development cost is what I am solving. Comment on the sufficiency, actions, and evidence. Let me show you the development cost, and you start to read it. Okay, development cost, March 20 paper. Okay, go back the case. Okay, can you just read the development cost from here in August 2014? Just let me give you some time for this and up to here. Password to the audit team password to the audit team. Can you just read from the start to the end in August 14 up to the password to the audit team which I've highlighted. I'm giving you four minutes to read it out and if you can find uh, where the evidence is inadequate. And if you can find some actions and you can find some evidences as well, take five minutes maximum and prepare yourself for an answer during the live webinar. Your time starts now. Start reading it. Keep a pen and paper with you and keep noting the points you want to. Yes, uh, I have given you five minutes to read the question, right? That's the reason Mohammed and we there is no voice. Uh, I think students are working on the question. They're reading the question on the screen and finding the problems. I hope you're clear with that Mohammed and we that's the reason there was no voice. Because there was a pin drop pin drop silence because the students were working on the question in front of the screen. OK, uh, I've noted your uh, answer, Aisha. You are on the right track. Very good answer, Kamil. Uh, you are on the right track. So you're finding the inadequacies, Aisha and Kamil. You're finding the inadequacies and evidence, which is good. Yes, that's good, Bahawal. Wonderful point. That's 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 the inadequacy of evidence. Yes, very good answer, Janice. You are on the right track. 
Very good answer, Kamil. Yes, very good answer, Kiran Kumar. Ola, Huda, Omar, Laiba. You're all going on the right track. To, to, Tongai, Asad, wonderful. So sh that means you've all read it, right? So should I start my analysis and tell you where is the answer and how you should formulate an answer? So now stop your stop the chat box. Focus on the understanding because I am just now focusing on the answer. I'm not looking at the chat box for next five minutes. Okay, let's see what is to be done. Focus on the case. Okay, we need to comment on the sufficiency. We need to write the actions and procedures. That's what we need to do. Let's see how many things can we identify from the case study. Let's start the analysis. I, I've just copied the question during the break of five minutes when you were working on it uh, on my Microsoft Word file. I hope you can all now see the Microsoft Word file in front of you where the question has been copied down. Right, let's start the analysis. Okay, in, in August 20x4, the group commenced development of a new security system. That's good and incurred an expenditure of 600,000. So the group incurred an expenditure on the development, uh, which is 600,000 uh, up to the financial year end, which has been capitalized. So they have capitalized the development cost as an intangible assets. Okay, that's fine. The only audit evidence obtained. So let's see what's the problem with the evidence obtained. Have the audit team obtained the right evidence for the development cost of 600,000, which has been capitalized, or have they taken a wrong evidence? Is the evidence adequate or not? The first evidence they obtained is agreement. Agreement means to reconcile something. So they reconcile a sample, fine, of a cost included in 600,000 capitalized to supporting documents such as supplier invoices. So they're just confirming the expense. They have verified a sample of 600,000 to the supplier invoices just to confirm that the expense is uh, true. It is not a false expense. So you're just confirming the, uh, you're just confirming that the expense has indeed occurred. The next is you took a cash flow projection and in the cash flow projection, uh, for the project, which indicates that a positive cash flow will be generated by 20x8. The projection has been arithmetically checked. You only arithmetically reviewed the projection. That's next. And a written representation was taken by you. And a written representation uh, from the management stating that the management consider the development cost to be successful. That is it. Tell me, looking at the three bullets here, before I read the other question, have in, whether the evidence obtained is inadequate, the answer is yes, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, the audit team has not obtained any evidence on the breakup of the 600,000, which could have confirmed the element of a research cost. So has the audit team identified uh, the element of a research cost while they were carrying a work on uh, the 600,000? Just confirming the supplier invoices, will that confirm how much is the research cost? No. So just confirming the supplier invoices will confirm the amount of expense, will not confirm the bifurcation of expense. Between
uh can all of you hear me So oh, apologize for that but that was just for uh, a minute and two okay we were in the middle of a discussion i hope you can see my screen uh and we were discussing whether the evidence obtained by the audit team is sufficient or not so they just had an agreement of the sample uh of invoices to confirm the expense was indeed occurred but they didn't have any evidence on the bifurcation between research cost and the uh, and the development cost so let let me write the first comment let me write the first comment on sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence right let's see how we go about writing the answer yes the marking scheme uh, has changed now it's one mark right it's not one and a half marks anymore so i need to guide you about the most updated marking scheme in every webinar wherever they have changed in okay let's let's write the first comment see how you write the first comment in the first comment you write uh, the evidence uh, the uh, the agreement of the agreement to supplier invoices the agreement uh, to supplier invoices only confirm that uh, expense was indeed occurred expense was indeed occurred but failed to provide any evidence on the bifurcation on the by Bifurcation on the bifurcation of research cost and development cost within the dollar six hundred thousand. So the agreement to supplier invoices only confirmed that expense was indeed occurred, which is fine, but it failed to provide evidence on the bifurcation of research and development cost within six hundred thousand. Thus there is no evidence on research cost thus there is no evidence gathered by the team on research cost and i close my answer and i write one mark now uh, i need to recommend further evidence so my further evidence would be what my further evidence would be uh, a breakup my further evidence would be a breakup of dollar uh, six hundred thousand, a breakup of development cost of dollar six hundred thousand. You never write the word. You never write the word copy with the breakup, right? So in the exam, you never say copy of the breakup. You say breakup because management provides the breakup to the auditor directly, right? So even if you write the word copy of breakup, no issues, right? So. The evidence you need is copy of uh, is the breakup of the development cost of six hundred thousand to confirm that to confirm whether there is any component of cost which should be classified as research cost. I hope my voice is getting through to everyone. There is no further issues with voice. Is it going through? Okay, great. So we we took a breakup, right, of the development cost. So is, is that my evidence breakup? Will there be a breakup in my working paper file as a further evidence? Everyone agrees to this. And is everyone clear? We never write the word copy of breakup. We directly write the word breakup in the exam paper, right? So we get one mark for evidence, right? So two marks out of eleven. Let's let's proceed further. Next. Okay, a cash flow projection has been arithmetically checked. Is that sufficient? Is that adequate? Should we should we review the basis of the cash flow forecast? Should we uh, check the underlying basis, the assumptions used in the cash flow forecast? Is this realistic or not? Just checking the arithmetical accuracy of the cash flow projection. Is that right, everyone? No. So should I put my second uh, second comment? So I'll put my second call comment. Uh, a loan a loan arithmetical accuracy. A loan earth medical accuracy alone arithmetical accuracy uh, of cash flow forecast is not adequate evidence is not adequate evidence because 
earth because this will not confirm because this will not confirm the underlying basis this will not confirm the underlying basis and their adequacy this will not confirm the underlying basis and their adequacy used in preparing the cash flow used in preparing the cash flow forecast so a loan arithmetical accuracy of the cash flow forecast is uh, is not an adequate evidence because this will not confirm the underlying basis and their adequacy used in preparing the cash flow forecast thus the audit team has gathered no evidence on the basis nor nor have challenged nor have challenged the basis used in preparing the cash flow forecast so are you getting the way of commenting on the evidence briefly one mark so uh, what extra evidence should i have should i should i have notes of discussion with the finance director to confirm the underlying basis should i have notes of discussion as an evidence when whenever you write evidence in the exam paper you take an assumption that there is no limitation right even though the limitation is given in the exam paper so whenever you're writing an evidence you will assume that there is no limitation and the limitation has been removed so will i write in my evidence notes of discussion confirming the underlying basis notes of discussion confirming notes of discussion with finance director confirming the underlying basis used in preparing the cash flow forecast and the realisticness and the realisticness of the assumptions and the realisticness of the assumptions used for a stop notes of discussion so am i writing a procedure no i'm writing the evidence so i have to be very careful right you can use any format right you can immediately write an action after you write a comment it's it's totally up to you how you present your answer so how many marks have i got out of 11 so far everyone have you got four of 11 marks we just into into one area right okay you go down the last thing a written representation from the management do you believe the written representation was taken too early uh, normally the written representation is a last resort is the last resort of evidence do you believe audit a team has done very less work and they have taken a representation too early they should have done more work they should have done work on the technical feasibility they should have done more work on the financial feasibility on the operational feasibility of the new security system they they should have uh, spent time on the accounting treatment of the research cost do you think they've taken representation a bit too early in a hurry which is not an appropriate way of performing the audit so last comment and i'm exiting from this question the last comment uh, the representation uh, is a last resort of evidence is a last resort of evidence and it seems that the audit team has obtained representation has obtained representation as a source of evidence too early or when too less work was performed by the audit team uh, the representation the representation is not a substitute of the evidence obtained directly by the auditor one mark R read read my paragraph and tell me does it make sense to all of you read my para 3 and tell me are you comfortable with the knowledge i portray in the para 3 Right, so 
perhaps you you performed nothing just an arithmetical check just a verification of the supplier invoices and you wrap up you wrap up your work on development cost just by taking a representation letter that's too early right it cannot be a substitute of the evidence obtained directly by the auditor so are you getting the are you getting the way of doing a comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence anywhere in my comment was i concerned about the classification of sufficiency and appropriateness what i concerned about the classification anywhere when i was writing the three paragraphs in in the live webinar what i concerned about the classification so are you getting the way of writing an answer and there are so many other points right which i cannot just cover up within the limitation of the webinar but let's let's go down with the next paragraph we left with uh, if i read the last paragraph which i didn't you are aware you are aware that the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection uh, which he had prepared he was reluctant to answer question he was reluctant to answer questions simply saying that the assumptions underlying the proje projections have been agreed to the group business plan so he is reluctant to answer question is that is that a problem which i should resolve through an action is that a problem between the auditor and the management that the management is reluctant to answer questions is is that an issue which should which needs to be resolved you all agree is is that an issue which needs to be resolved yes good so he was reluctant to answer questions see i write an action here action the audit team should discuss or the audit manager the audit manager should dis should discuss with the group finance director or should inform should inform the uh, the group finance director the uh, auditor power to access all information and explanation and the responsibility of the management and the responsibility of the management to provide all explanations to auditor to uh, provide all explanations to auditor so do you need to clarify this to the finance director that this is my responsibility and this is your this is my power and this is your responsibility so you cannot be reluctant here right should i tell him that you have an audit engagement letter kindly see the audit engagement letter i send you before the start of the audit so is is that an action that you should inform the group finance director of your powers should inform the group finance director is is that an action you are taking uh to resolve the problem right is is that is that an action you're taking to resolve the problem right and bahawal uh, it's it's just a change of term right you you say right you say power it, it's the power of the auditor right so I, i'm more comfortable with the word power of the auditor here right so uh, am i making a bifurcation of headings here that i do headings like this actions and i do headings like this evidence no i i'm writing them in one go irrespective they are evidence or irrespective they are actions so you just write them under one heading actions and further evidence see this heading actions and further evidence so you're not taking any tension in the exam hall irrespective you're writing whatever so you just put one broad heading here actions and further evidence and you try to write everything under so i get another one mark here right last go up okay he was reluctant right next he provided a he provided a spreadsheet showing the projection but the underlying information could not be accessed could not be accessed as the file was password protected so is he trying to limit uh, the scope of the auditor by giving auditor a password protected file knowing the fact that the auditor have power to access all information so is the finance director trying to limit the scope of the auditor should we tell the finance director that we have a certain set of power which is given in the audit engagement letter and the and the group finance director would not provide the password to the audit team so is is that an issue which needs to be resolved 
So last issue to be resolved. Uh, the manager, the audit manager, should uh, discuss with the group finance director the preconditions of audit, the preconditions of audit mentioned in the audit engagement letter mentioned in the audit engagement letter uh, reinforcing reinforcing the fact that auditor have access that auditor has access to all information and nothing can and and uh, auditor has access to all information and management could not limit the scope of auditor and you can also tell you can also tell the finance director uh, the audit manager need to inform need to inform of the implications need to inform of the implications on audit report if the limitation on audit work is not removed so are you trying to threaten the finance director uh, through the uh, through uh, through informing him of the implication if the limitation on audit work work is not removed so that's also part of your action right sometimes your actions have to be intimidating you need to intimidate through your action to get the director on the right track because it seems that the director is not willing to come on the right track so you you speak politely and then you need to intimidate the finance director No, a uh, third and fourth section is not uh, exactly the same because over here I generally speak of the auditor power. Look at my language here, preconditions of audit. See how different language are used here. Look, look at the engagement letter. Am I using the same terminologies in my three and four? No, I'm using a very different terminology. So are you getting the track five marks under actions and further evidence and almost like three marks under my comment on sufficiency so eight marks out of 11 but the my bottom line here is which i need all of you to answer are you understanding how to solve a question like such which ask you comment uh, sorry which ask you comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained by the team so were you able to find the flaws in the evidence obtained were you able to identify the shortcomings in the evidence obtained and are you concerned about classifying them into sufficiency and appropriateness or are you just speaking of why it is inadequate and is everyone clear about actions if there is a problem in the case study you need to resolve it through actions and i hope you're very clear with the terminology evidence so i purposely wrote evidence uh, break up notes so i was very focused on writing evidence not procedures so please ensure that you read the question carefully first because if you are unable to read the question carefully first instead of writing evidence you can write procedures or you might do a wrong answer and you regret later coming out of the exam hall so tell me how important is it to read the question carefully how important is it to read the question carefully how important is that? Do you all agree it's very important? So if you read the question carefully, uh, remember, if you read question carefully, remember there can be a comma in the question which splits the question. There can be the word, there can be the word and in the question which breaks the question. And how many times the student overlooks the comma or how many times the student overlooks the word and so you need to read the question carefully to see how many things you need to do. How many things is the examiner asking you to do? Is the examiner asking you to do? Then only you can write a complete answer. So I, I hope you understand the importance of reading the questions just like the march 20 paper so you write a complete answer
this this really impact on your passing, right? The AAA paper, because in the AAA paper, at times the question is asking for more than one thing, and the students overlook the word comma, or the student overlooks the and, and they come out writing an incomplete answer, and then they expect examiner to pass them at 50. How can the examiner pass you at 50 when you have given an incomplete answer to the examiner? I hope you're all clear on that. So have you got the message procedures? Evidence question number one, evidence question number two. Right now, I just want to do one last thing with you. Uh, when I was discussing with you the question number one on evidence, right? When I was discussing with you the question one on evidence. Uh, which basically ask you uh, comment on the matters and explain the evidence. I want to give you some guidance for uh, incremental marks. How can you get incremental marks on the question number one? Let, let me copy the question number one again, uh, where I was discussing that with you. And I believe you can gain extra marks uh, in in this case. Okay, let me comment this, copy this question again and take it down to my question one on evidence again. Okay, now you are all clear with the question one, right? Comment on the matters and explain the evidence, right? And uh, you're very clear on comment on the matters, right? But I just want to make, give you a very good suggestion now. Comment on the matters, and you know the matter is the accounting treatment. The matter is the accounting treatment, and you, you go with comments, you comment on the materiality, you comment on the accounting treatment. And you comment on the risk, which is under or. Overt statement, right now. When I was writing the government grant with all of you. Be very focused, right? When I was writing the government grant with you in the webinar. I got three marks, right? Uh, by writing the paragraph because there was just one materiality. There was one materiality, there was one accounting treatment, and there was one risk, right? But what if, what if in the exam, the accounting matter consists of discrete figures, consists of discrete figures, and the accounting treatment, the accounting treatment consists of multiple issues. Will that increase your scoring opportunity? What if the what if in the exam the accounting matter is having different figures? For example, in the account in the paper you get something about loan and loan has a value. But along with loan having a value there is also the value of the finance cost given in the case. Now, if that is the case, can you find materiality? Can you find materiality for the loan by taking it in the context of the total assets and finding the percentage because loan is primarily an SOFP item? And can you find the materiality of the finance cost separately? Because finance cost materiality will be taken on the profit before tax because it's, it's, it is a statement of comprehensive income item. So if you are working on a situation where you have discrete figures in a situation and you know these are discrete figures, one is a PL item and one is a balance sheet item, loan and the Finance cost, something like this. Will you be able to find two marks of materiality here by dividing the loan with total assets and by dividing the finance cost with the profit before tax? Is everyone clear? One mark and one mark in a question on evidence I'm talking about, right? In a question on evidence I'm talking about. Is everyone clear with this example? Okay, take, take another example. For example, the accounting 
uh, meta the accounting meta given in case relates with relates with impairment loss recognized the question tells you that the impairment loss was recognized impairment loss recognized by management so is that good the management has recognized an impairment loss has the management done the right accounting treatment by recognizing the impairment loss when the indicator of impairment exists for example so the question is telling you that the impairment loss was recognized by the management and you need to comment on the meta so what will you do first see you will comment on the materiality of the impairment loss if that is given and you will get one mark then you will comment on the accounting treatment of the impairment loss now now get to my point you will comment on the accounting treatment of impairment loss but this is a situation in exam paper where the accounting treatment consists of multiple issues now when you are commenting on the accounting treatment of impairment loss perhaps you will first comment on the uh, presence of the indicators you will first comment on the presence of the indicator that is one accounting treatment one mark you will then comment on the determination determination of the right recoverable amount you will then talk about the determination of the right recoverable amount which is higher of the which is higher of the value in use or fair value less cost to sell is is it a possibility that the management has understated the impairment loss even though they have recognized it so should should you write the accounting treatment of the recoverable amount that the recoverable amount should be rightly rightly calculated so you comment on the determination of the right recoverable amount which is the higher of the value in use or fair value what if the management has taken it at the lower or what if the management has determined the value in use wrongly or what if the management has determined the fair value wrongly will will that result in a wrong impairment loss recognized will that result in an understatement of an impairment loss so it, when when you are writing an accounting treatment of a complex situation like impairment loss you can gain multiple marks first by commenting on the indicator then commenting on the recoverable amount and then finally comment sorry then finally commenting on commenting on the impairment loss being uh, when the carrying amount exceeds the recoverable amount and then you judge whether the impairment loss recognized by management is the right amount or the wrong amount so you can gain multiple marks for accounting treatment so the government grant accounting treatment is very simple the impairment loss accounting treatment is very different where you can gain marks more so are you finding opportunities where you can gain more marks on materiality in a given situation everyone are you finding opportunities where you can gain more marks on commenting on the accounting treatment if the accounting treatment is very complex or there is a lot of lot of comments you can make on accounting treatment now tell me the comment on the government grant and the comment on the impairment can can we make more comments on impairment because there are so many components of impairment the indicators the recoverable amount the fair value the value in use is that clear so is there a lot to talk about in impairment like a comment on the indicator one the comment on the recoverable amount two and the comment on the impairment loss when carrying amount exceeds the recoverable amount so is there more space to comment on impairment are you getting my point is there more space to comment on impairment than the space you have in government grant for example right now understand another situation what if you get a situation in comment on matters when materiality is not given when materiality is not possible so then that means when you get a situation 
when materiality is not possible, then how would you go? You will not get any marks on materiality. So you will directly start with comment on the treatment and you will directly start with risk. You cannot get any marks for materiality if numbers are not given and you cannot find the materiality. So you will get no marks for materiality because that's not possible. You cannot forcefully identify materiality. You cannot forcefully identify materiality. And in the past paper, there are a number of situations where examiner keeps materiality at zero because he's not giving you any numbers to work on materiality. And in, in some situation, the accounting treatment is so productive that you can gain marks on. Look, look at an example. Uh, which you have to do as an home question. September December 19 question. Look at the requirement uh, of the question number two of the September December 19 question on your screen. Look at this requirement. Are you familiar with this requirement? We just did in the question in the class today. Just just read this requirement quickly. Have you done this requirement today in the classroom and tell me you agree or disagree? This is question number two, right? Of the September De December 19 exams, which you have to do as your assignment. Okay, do you all agree? If, apart from just one student, Navami, who's saying yes, sir. Do you agree this requirement was done in the class today? In the webinar today? Okay, thank you. Okay, if you all agree this was done in the webinar today, look at the accounting treatment here. The first accounting treatment here is the sale and lease back. Look at the first accounting treatment here, which is the sale and lease back. Is there any value given in the sale and lease back transaction? Is there any value given of uh, the property which was de-recognized? Read, read this whole paragraph of sale and lease back. Is there any value in the entire paragraph? Tell me. So when you are commenting on the methods of sale and lease back, Will you gain marks for materiality? No value, right? But when you are commenting on the accounting treatment of sales and lease back transaction, I'm just giving you a clue, I'm just giving you a clue, right? Uh, is the examiner talking about IFRS 16 and IFRS 15 in the last two lines? Is the examiner talking about IFRS 16 and IFRS 15 in the last two lines? Yes. Is there a clue? Now, when you're talking about a sale and lease back transaction in the exam paper, for example, okay, just give me one minute, right? For example, uh, the sale and lease back transaction, which is in the September, December 19 exams, question number two, uh, you have no materiality, right? You have no materiality. But look at the accounting treatment. Examiner is giving you a clue. Examiner is giving you IFRS 15, sale and lease back. And examiner is giving you IFRS 16, sale. So that means because it's a sale and lease back, which is very complex, first of all, to understand that is it a, is it a sale transaction? Is it a genuine sales transaction? You need to quote the IFRS 15. You need to think about whether there was a transfer of control, whether there was a transfer of control. Has the, uh, whether there was a, whether control of the asset have been retained by the seller or whether it has been passed to the buyer. Sale and lease back, because that's very important. So do you need to write an accounting treatment for transfer of control? To confirm whether the seller still retains the right over the asset? or whether the right over the asset have been passed or the control over the asset have been passed to the buyer? Yes, when there is no transfer of control, that means there is no sale. So should we first write the accounting treatment for transfer of control to confirm the sale and the, and the right accounting treatment of sale? Everyone? Okay, and then because the examiner is talking about the IFRS 16, then we need to talk about the right of use of asset. If if indeed, for example, if I'm just taking a bit more time here, but because you have to do it yourself, uh, I just want to guide you something. Look at this. Uh, can you just read this in one minute? So it makes sense to me and you. Can you just read this paragraph in one minute? Because I want to give you an example. 
that has the management recognize the sales transaction rightly? Can you just read it quickly? The paragraph of sale and lease back and tell me you've read it. Just quickly read the sales and lease back transaction paragraph in two minutes. Right. So, do you agree that uh, Lifeson Lifeson Company has rightly, rightly record, rightly derecognized the property sales? Because I think the the life the lease life is very less ten years, and the remaining life of the property is in excess of fifty years. So, I I think the control the control have passed to the buyer. The control has passed to the buyer, right? So uh, is is Lifeson Company right in derecognizing the property? Is Lifeson Company right in derecognizing the property from the financial statement? Yes, but you need to write the accounting treatment of the transfer of control to justify that the accounting treatment adopted by the Lifeson Company is right. So the Lifeson Company is right. To justify that you need to write the accounting treatment of transfer of control and then say that the, the accounting treatment adopted by Lifeson company is perfect. But have they recognized the right of use of asset? Because it's a sale, uh, it, it's a lease back transaction. Should they recognize the right of use of asset? And I think the question is silent on that. Uh, have they recognized the lease liability? Have they recognized the liability at the present value of lease payment? No, have have they recognized uh, the uh, gain or loss, gain or loss on the sale and lease back transaction in the PNL, in the profit and loss. So I think even though they have derecognized the property, which is right, but the question is silent as to whether they have recognized the right of use of asset, whether they've recognized the liability, or whether they've recognized the gain or loss in the profit and loss. So can we write the accounting treatments for right of use of asset and liability and gain and loss in the profit and loss to gain more marks and tell the management if management has not recognized it, then the then the right of use of asset is understated. Or the liability is understated. Are you getting my point everyone? So in this question, there was no materiality, right? But in this question, you can gain so much on the accounting treatment. You can gain so much on the accounting treatment by writing the accounting treatment. Gain so much on it by writing the IFRS 15 for transfer of control and then writing the IFRS 16 for right of use of asset liability and the gain or loss in the profit and loss account. So I think the management has done the right treatment partially by derecognizing the property but about the other accounting treatments because it's a sale and lease back transaction so they should record the right of use of asset which has not been recorded so is there an opportunity to get like three four marks from the accounting treatment here right and then you can talk about the risk i think the risk is uh, if if right of use of asset is not recorded if right of use of asset is not recorded that's the risk right and then then you speak about the evidence evidence in working paper file so i think uh, out of the eight marks three to four marks can go on accounting treatment one mark can go on the risk and you can write like three evidences to wrap up your answer is that clear to everyone so will you be solving this question sale and lease back in the next few hours from the webinar? If the time in your country is appropriate, there might be different time zones in different country, or at least you are wrapping up this topic tomorrow. Okay, uh, please drop your feedback for the overall day for today. How productive is it was today? And how much you learned today? and how much uh, you gained today.
if you can just drop the feedback so will you continue with the learnings and homeworks given to you today and will you be wrapping up the reading of articles i recommended you the watching of article uh, watching of the webinars will you watch the previous webinars will you be uh, going with uh, the article readings and the questions questions you need to do right and please go over my presentation there is a lot a lot of good stuff in my presentation which i covered on my word file i'll share the word file with you uh, later in the next few hours and you can take benefit of my slides even uh, tomorrow is the last day of the webinar and a very very important day because uh, it will be another important session on the misconceptions on audit report uh, it's not just the question i'll be solving tomorrow but i will generally be discussing the misconceptions the student have around audit report uh, because there is there are so many of them literally so 3 hours tomorrow will refine your knowledge about audit report and you will be uh, you will be in a better position to watch the previous webinars and take good command on audit report as a topic right thank you so very much all of you for this uh, feedback and thank you so very much for taking your time out and participating in this live webinar day 4 today i'll see you back tomorrow with the day 5 the final day i wish you all success in your upcoming exams provided you study in an effective manner so this is your tutor kashif kamran signing off from day 4 of the aaa practice to pass for june 21 being organized by acc pakistan have a nice day stay safe and uh, study effectively i'll see you back on day 5 the final day tomorrow take care goodbye and allah hafiz